And welcome everyone to San Jose. It's great to see uh, all of you here. And I'm particularly proud uh, and I'd like to thank our California Library Association literacy section as well as some of our staff at the California State Library for putting together this track. And, and I know many of you who are aware who do conference planning that putting something together like this is really yeoman's duty and they all have lots of other things to do but um, California really wanted to try to step up to the plate when we were the first state to have the PLA Spring Symposium come to a new location instead of outside of Chicago. Chicago's a wonderful place. We know Mr. Wedgworth was there for a while. Uh, but the weather this time of year is always challenging, although I love Chicago. It really is great. But we were so proud that PLA decided to come to California, to San Jose. We wanted to really step up to the plate and show you something that we think we do here in California that's unique. But I also really appreciate Jackie's um, perspective on making sure we have a panel that's going to present you with all kinds of approaches to literacy because literacy is a key service for public libraries and we really hope that you will go out and embrace it in your own libraries in your own states. <clears throat> I was invited to speak today because of my ongoing commitment to literacy, literacy services in California public libraries and I was pleased to be uh, a director out in the field when Gary Strong was our state librarian and began this program and I began uh, a program in a very small city library, I worked in a rural library, I worked in urban libraries and all the time I was supporting liter literacy in various ways. I see some of the faces out there and we've struggled with many different issues and I have to tell you, I'm sure Gary may reflect this as well, this has not been an easy task in California. This has been a struggle. We didn't get to 104 library jurisdictions uh, providing literacy service with, with a lot of ease. It's been a struggle. Uh, but I think it's been a struggle that, that's been worthwhile. Um, I'm also here wearing my Public Library Association hat and I'm very proud to say that literacy services figure prominently in the newly revised service responses that PLA is now uh, presented at ALA Midwinter and is now reviewing. The service responses have been a core element of the PLA planning process for a decade and thanks to the input of PLA members and PLA blog readers, new and improved service responses were recently identified it says here as of February 15th, but I know there was a meeting. I hope some of you were able to attend the discussion at ALA uh, midwinter in Seattle on the service responses. Of the many things that public libraries regularly provide to their communities, literacy services is there amongst the 18 new proposed service responses. So that's really great that we are there, a service response. Here's the wording for the literacy uh, service response. And these are proposed. We're still working on finally vetting these new service responses. The title is Learn to Read and Write, Adult, Teen, and Family Literacy. The service response is adult, adults and teens will have the support they need to improve their literacy skills in order to meet their personal goals and fulfill their responsibilities as parents, citizens, and workers. I think this is a big improvement over the former service response, which it was good there was one there, but this is improved, uh, and it referenced literacy to some extent. And the wording from the 1997 version was basic literacy, and the response itself was address the need to read and to perform other essential daily tasks. I hope you can agree that there is a big improvement in the new version for several reasons. First, the earlier version did not specify whose basic literacy skills we were talking about. Since the other 1997 service responses did not describe any particular services for children, and we know that was kind of a hotly debated topic, any of you that followed that back then, uh, this basic literacy category in some cases became a catch-all for all kinds of services. So we didn't really feel we had a unique identification <clears throat> for literacy services that were focused on uh, challenged readers. The new version clearly specifies we are talking about adults, teens, and family literacy, and the service responses now include a separate response for emergent literacy that really addresses our younger learners, the zero to five learners, and our creation of young readers. Second, the earlier version suggests that libraries address the need to read, <coughs> excuse me, whereas the new version more directly asks libraries to support the need to improve literacy school skills. A shift which I think means that libraries are naturally expected to be more proactive in their provision of literacy services. Addressing something isn't really going out there and engaging in your community and make sure, making sure you're meeting those specific needs in your community. 
Uh, the previous version talks about results of literacy services as, as the ability for a new reader to perform essential daily tasks. Now, now that's, that was a good start, but the new version uses far more detailed language to describe the impact of library literacy services. And they say specifically, improving literacy skills in order to meet personal goals and fulfill responsibilities as parents, citizens, and workers. It's as if we now really understand the way that literacy services change lives. It's not just about being able to complete additional tasks. It's about reaching your potential in your life roles. That's, that's just a great change, and I think it's very significant and, pro and shows the result of the work that all, all of us have, been doning, have done over the last 10 years. So if those service responses are any barometer of collective library thinking, and I hope that they are, literacy services have come into their own with the recent service responses. <clears throat> I'm going to take off my PLA hat uh, and put on my California State Librarian hat for a little while to tell you about California literacy services. And you're going to be hearing more about that from uh, other speakers as well. But as many of you are aware, in California, we're fortunate to have a very strong <clears throat> statewide literacy effort now called California Library Literacy Services, formerly called the California Literacy Campaign. Excuse me. <clears throat> I wasn't out partying last night. <clears throat> I don't know what's happening here. A little dry throat. Uh, there is a line item in our state budget to support these services, and the California State Library distributes the state funding to our local library jurisdictions and also underwrites state staffing for technical support. And the staff members, uh, we have there, them here today, Jackie Brinkley, who you met, that did the introduction, Carla Lane, who's in the back there, one of our state library staff folks, and another person who many of you know, who unfortunately has now moved on to Texas, Valerie Ranke, who worked with us for a number of years, and we really miss Valerie, and she's helped a lot with our program, so thanks for being here, Val. Uh, <clears throat> Some fast facts, though, for you to be aware of. The California State Library has supported literacy efforts for 22 years, and Gary will be talking a little more about the origins and history of this effort. Today, as we've said previously, 104 of the 180 public library jurisdictions in California provide adult literacy services, and this covers every major metropolitan area and many of our rural communities. Literacy services are provided in over 800 library branches and other outlets. Now, just to scale, in California, even though we have only 100 and library, 180 library jurisdictions, and for those of you in the East or Midwest, you might think, my gosh, that state has 37 million people and they only have 180 library jurisdictions. I think because of the scale and scope of California, we've organized in very large ways. But that results in, that's represented by 1,100 actual physical outlets. And of those 1,100 outlets, 800 of them are providing literacy services. So we're really, we're getting there. You know, we're well over 50%. Um, we have served, at least in 2005, 2006, that year only, we served over 20,000 adults. And we have 11,000 volunteers providing one-on-one -on -one and small group tutoring for their participating adult learners. I don't want to make it sound like the California Library Literacy Services is just a program of the California State Library because it's really much more than that. It's a collaboration or partnership between the State Library and the 104 jurisdictions who participate. In fact, in 2005-06, state funding was $5.1 million for library literacy services, which really is nowhere near enough, but that's what we have and it hasn't increased in a number of years. We're working with it. All of those funds pass through to our local library jurisdictions. Now, in doing that, though, that really in a way is venture capital or incentive at the local level because libraries leverage state funding with local support to the tune of $14 million, providing nearly $3 for every $1 million of state funds. So we're really just creating an incentive for local communities to address literacy needs. There is a great return on investment for the state's funds, but also an indication that local governments and library directors support literacy services with as, mu with as much passion as we do at the state level. 
To further understand this living and breathing entity that is uh, California Library Literacy Services, it's best to turn to our values. And the values of our program are found in your packet, so you don't necessarily have to pull that out, but there is value, a value statement there. These are the principles that have defined the California Library Literacy Services as something different from other education providers. These values help us define our niche in the world of adult education, codifying our operating philosophies and illustrating how literacy services in libraries are unique. One of our, our first value is literacy is a regular library service, or we might say core library service as well. We believe that literacy services should be integrated into library services and viewed as just one more function of the library, like reference information and children's services. Literacy services help libraries fulfill their mission by providing information and resource sharing as well as opportunities for lifelong learning. And this has really been a struggle in California to make sure that uh, libraries who participate in this program really embrace it as a critical service. And, and it is one, and I think we've, we've received a lot of uh, support and development and growth from literacy. But it's been a struggle, and still in some situations, it's still kind of a service that's a little bit one-off. You know, it's not, the, it's, it's not your traditional, but in the 21st century, this is the kind of service base we have to have to be relevant and to exist. A second value is that literacy services are the product of a state and local partnership. And just as I said before, this is really colla collaboration. And because literacy is viewed as a core library service, both the state and local levels strive to ensure continuity of programming. This is not an annual grant program where libraries have to live year to year wondering if their funding will be intact in the future. The state funding process provides a continual baseline of support based on achievement of minimum standards and reporting requirements. In, addi in addition, we know that a strong, healthy library literacy service is funded in large measure by its local jurisdiction, and the state funding formula re rewards that, commi that commitment. When the program uh, began, we funded programs at a much higher level, but at this point, it's it's fairly rare that we bring in new programs, although we've had the opportunity this year to do so, uh, to bring a few new programs in. But basically, we're providing a baseline of funding for ongoing programs. Another value is that literacy services are inclusive of English as a second language. Now, it was determined um, long ago in the beginning of our literacy efforts that the focus of the California Library's literacy services would be basic literacy. That is, literacy for adults who are already speaking English but need to improve their reading and writing skills, not ESL, or English as a Second Language. And this is a big topic, and I'm, Gary may address this. He was, <laughs> he was there at the time when some of these, uh, these priorities were set. But back in the beginning, the turf lines for services were clearly drawn between the California Department of Education. And in our state, the State Library is not at this time part of the Department of Education. We're a small, independent agency, <laughs> thanks to Gary. <laughs> Um, community colleges were another player and libraries and it was, de it was determined that the Department of Ed and community colleges were best suited for serving an ESL population in California and they usually take the classroom approach for learners and that the state library role was best suited to provide basic literacy to English speakers which is best provided as a one-on-one -on -one or small group approach so we really have a niche that we're meeting here in our state. Now this is not to say that participating libraries do not provide ESL services in addition to their basic literacy services. That's a critical need as well. And many have identified that unfilled need in their communities and have found other funding, either library funding, other local funding, private funding, to support ESL services. But the state library's mandate from the beginning has been to target those hardest to reach individuals who you find in the National Assessment of Adult Literacy, the NAAL, at the basic and below basic level. <clears throat> in closing, I'd like to report, I'd like to mention a great report that I hope many of you are familiar with. This is a report that was recently released by the Americans for Libraries Council. Hope you're familiar with that. It's entitled Long Overdue, A Fresh Look at Public and Leadership Attitudes About Libraries in the 21st Century. Now, it's been out about 
uh, I, I want I want to say it came out in the summer, but it is you can find this on the Americans for Libraries Council website, uh, a group that was formerly known as Libraries for the Future. If any of you are familiar with Libraries for the Future, Americans for Libraries Council is the same organization. They've they've changed their name, and Libraries for the Future is their program arm. Um, in this study. Uh, there is valuable information in this report that all of us in the public library world should consider in regard to literacy services. When survey respondents were asked for service priorities for their local public libraries, 60% noted that adult literacy programs were a priority. Also, when asked about community priorities, 72% of the respondents identified providing help for people who do not have basic reading skills as a priority. We know the need is there. We know that there is an expectation that libraries should help. It is my hope that libraries throughout the United States will rise to this challenge and will work collaboratively to bring about a response equal to the magnitude of this problem. And just anecdotally, in the libraries that, that I have worked in, um, I have found that the literacy programs are of such tremendous value because first of all, we really show our value to the community in changing the lives of our learners. And you get some of those learners who are now have a totally different job or are reading to their children or following their health medication in at a board of supervisors meeting talking about how much that program means to them. It's, it's a huge difference. Folks that are working in the, the literacy programs are out there constantly developing partnerships. And in fact, I frankly think the literacy programs in California provide a good model for many of our other service units in our public libraries that they need to follow that now and get out there, reach out, and make partnerships. So literacy really, in our state, kind of set the trend for where we need to be in the 21st century. Public libraries have so many strengths. Our ability to organize and collaborate our ability to create a learning environment that doesn't exclude anyone, and our ability to be part of the solution when challenges arise. It's time to capitalize on these strengths. Working together, we can make a dent in the NAAL statistics, and we can continue to make our nation a more literate place. Thank you.